Lincoln, what about Shireen Abu Akhle? She was murdered started. by Israeli forces. Right, CNN just agreed to this. These are your two greatest allies in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia Again, and Israel. They uh, have murdered American journalists and there have been absolutely no repercussions. And you're sitting up here talking about the freedom of press and democracy. The United States is denying sovereignty to tens of millions of people around the world with draconian sanctions for electing leaders that you do not like. Why is there no accountability for Israel or Saudi Arabia for murdering journalists? It is one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a journalist in Palestine. I deplore the loss of, uh, of Shireen. Um, she was a remarkable journalist, an American citizen, uh, as you all know. And there, too, we are determined to follow the facts and get to the truth. The facts of what Secretary Blinken, no, all due respect. Not the, no, they, due respect. I'm sorry, with respect, respect they have not yet been established. Yes, looking has. For, no, they have not. We are looking for a, an independent, credible investigation. When that investigation happens, we will follow the facts wherever they lead. It's, it's uh, as straightforward as that. That has not yet happened, but it's something that we very much want to see happen. And we'll have time after Thank the you. panel, of course, Thank to talk you. more. That was Secretary of State Antony Blinken being confronted by journalist Abby Martin about the U.S. government's hypocrisy when it comes to freedom of the press. Now, once this video was published, Abby Martin took to Twitter to explain, I wanted to keep pressure on the U.S. government for Israel's murder of journalist Shireen Abu Akleh and hypocrisy of using press freedom to kill people with sanctions. Now, it's important to note that Antony Blinken, in his response to Abby Martin, was absolutely lying. We definitively know that Israel targeted this journalist and murdered her. The CNN article that Abby Martin referenced in that video confirms just that. The Israeli military says it is not clear who fired the fatal shot. In a preliminary inquiry, the army said there was a possibility Abu Akleh was hit either by indiscriminate Palestinian gunfire or by an Israeli sniper positioned about 200 meters, about 656 feet away, in an exchange of fire with Palestinian gunmen. Though neither Israel nor anyone else provided evidence showing armed Palestinians with Within a clear line of fire from Abu Akleh. But an investigation by CNN offers new evidence, including two videos of the scene of the shooting, that there was no active combat nor any Palestinian militants near Abu Akleh in the moments leading up to her death. Videos obtained by CNN corroborated by a testimony from eight eyewitnesses, an audio forensic analyst, and an explosive weapons expert suggest that Abu Akleh was shot dead in a targeted attack by Israeli forces. So Antony Blinken there is feigning ignorance when we know what happened. And look, I'm sorry, we knew from the beginning that Israel was lying. But yet, now that we have definitive proof, he's still pretending as if, well, we've really got to get to the bottom of this, and I definitely care, wink, wink. Sure. Now, as for Saudi Arabia, a 2021 report from the New York Times using U.S. intelligence released by the Biden administration confirms that Saudi Crown Prince approved of the assassination of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. However, the Biden administration refused to penalize Saudi Arabia because, quote, the risk of damaging American interests was too great. I'm going to repeat that quote again. The risk of damaging American interests was too great, so we couldn't penalize this regime that murdered a journalist, an American journalist. But yet we care about human rights and press freedom. And in fact, after that, the Biden administration sold Saudi Arabia weapons after saying he wouldn't do that, breaking another campaign promise. And the reason why we want to maintain this relationship is because strategically, Saudi Arabia is valuable to the United States, not just geopolitically, but because they have oil. So, I mean, this is what the United States does. They virtue signal, but they never live by the standards that they espouse. They hold other countries to higher standards than they hold themselves to, and they pick and choose who they're going to support and prop up based on their interests. And it's truly disgusting. Now, uh, there's another video that I want to share uh, where Antony Blinken was again confronted by journalist Eugene per year this time. And um, he's going to ask why it's the case that the United States' standards for democracy is so ass backwards. That's not his phrasing, but 
Just watch. I wonder how you justify the invitation of Dr. Ariel Henry from Haiti when he is uh, actually governing with no constitutional mandate. His government has been implicated in many different crimes, including potentially the murder of the past president. Countries like Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua are being uh, excluded from the Summit of the Americas because you deem them to not be democratic. But how can you use that as your justification when you have the so-called prime minister of Haiti who is ruling under no sort of democratic mandate here? Yeah, we, like many other countries, are determined to get to the, fact, to the facts of what happened in Haiti, including the assassination uh, of the previous uh, prime minister. Uh, we're determined to find the facts wherever uh, they lead and to whomever they lead. Well, sir, yes, but does democracy, does democracy only matter if they disagree with the United States government? What, 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 is, what, is your, what is your actual basis for saying a government is undemocratic and another one it can't be invited and another one that's undemocratic can be invited? Does democracy matter only if they disagree with the United States? The answer to that is yes. It's absolutely yes. Um, now, notice how... Every single thing that he said there was completely hollow and vacuous. I mean, he responded to that question as a customer service chatbot on Amazon would respond to a question. It's like he's this NPC. And whenever a tough question like this about the United States' hypocrisy comes up, you know, this NPC has this automatic dialogue tree that immediately initiates and he responds in a very, you know, non-committal way. Well, of course, we want to get to the bottom of this and we're all concerned and thoughts and prayers and yada, yada, yada. It's just, this is why people around the world don't take the United States seriously because we're so shamelessly hypocritical. It's why legitimacy-wise, we've been declining for decades because we do what we want you know, terrorize these countries, invade countries who didn't attack us, and then we claim, oh, we care about democracy and human rights. Unreal. Now, there's one more video that I want to show you, not of Antony Blinken, but of OAS chief Luis Amagro. Now, this is the organization which successfully pulled off a coup in Bolivia following unfounded Trumpian allegations of election fraud. Now, a member of the Party of Socialism and Liberation confronted him, and uh, as you're going to see, he was relentless and eventually he was put in handcuffs and uh, escorted out. Off the property. And he was go, killed. Off the property. You're here, you're here to lecture about media freedom. Would you install the dictatorship that murders journalists and murders innocent people? You have blood on your hands. Because of your lies, there was a coup in Bolivia, a coup against the democratically elected government. And that dictatorship that you helped install massacred 36 people, 36 innocent people who are protesting for the restoration of their democracy, for the restoration of the independence of their country. In the towns of Sacaba and Sencata, people were protesting peacefully, indigenous people, workers, women, students, demanding the restoration of that democracy that you helped destroy. Destroy because the United States wanted to plunder the resources, the Bolivia, the gold, all of the mineral resources, the gas of Bolivia, the corporations in Wall Street and in the United States wanted to loot the resources of Bolivia. And so you helped install a dictatorship that would facilitate that looting. In Sacaba and Sencata, Dozens of people were massacred by the, the soldiers of your dictatorship. The soldiers of your dictatorship. And one of the people, one of the people that your dictatorship murdered was a journalist, Sebastian Moro. He was a journalist who was exposing the lies that you were telling and exposing the truth, the truth about the coup that you orchestrated. And he was beaten to death in his apartment. And now you come here and dare, and dare to lecture about media freedom, about democracy, about human rights. You have no shame. You're a murderer and you're a puppet of the United States. A puppet of the United States. In Venezuela too, you dared, you dared to support the coup attempt that Juan Guaido ridiculously, outrageously tried to attempt and declare himself the president of Venezuela. What a lie. What a lie. The majority of people in Venezuela had never even heard of Juan Guaido. And yet you said that he's the president, and I believe you still ridiculously say that Juan Guaido is the president of Venezuela. 
That is an outrage and it's an insult. An insult to the democracy and the sovereignty of the people of Venezuela. How dare you do this? You murderer who murdered people in Bolivia. You murderer who supported the sanctions in Venezuela. The sanctions in Venezuela that killed 40,000 people. 40,000 people because of your lies, because of the coup attempt that you've been part of. Sir, and you are nothing, murder. nothing but a murderer, and you have no sir, shame God, here to come good. and talk about sir. human rights, to lecture the okay. whole world, to lecture the whole hemisphere, to lecture the whole hemisphere about democracy and the freedom of the sir. press. Sir. When Sebastian Moro, an sir, Argentine sir. journalist who is in you've Bolivia, said an Argentine journalist who is in Bolivia, exposing the truth about the coup, and he was killed. You're here. You're here. To lecture about media freedom? Would you install the dictatorship that murders journalists and murders innocent people, workers, indigenous people, students, you? Yeah, kudos to him. He is absolutely brave and he is speaking truth to power. That's what that looks like right there. So thankfully, Bolivia ultimately thwarted this coup attempt and they took back their democracy. Uh, but the problem is that there's never been any accountability. And when there's no accountability, then we can all expect it to happen again. Perhaps not in Bolivia, but maybe in a different country. I mean, it happened with Venezuela, as that individual pointed out. So, you know, these leaders here, they have the audacity to speak about press freedom and democracy as if they genuinely care about that. They will disregard press freedom and democracy in an instant, so long as strategically that's the valuable position to take. Political expediency above everything else. Our interests above everything else. So I love that, you know, people were not backing down and so many journalists and activists confronted these leaders here. Because if you're going to say one thing but do another, that's something that as a civilized society, we just can't accept. So they have to be challenged and they have to be called out for their hypocrisy. And I applaud everyone here for standing up and genuinely speaking truth to power in a very important and profound way.